Welcome to another episode of Bargain Mint Saturdays. Though for today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at a good movie instead of the total dreck we usually get on this show. For today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker. But before I move on to the plot, I'd like to make it clear that today's review is of the uncut version of this film, and not the edited version of this film, which made several changes to multiple scenes which changed the tone and pacing of the movie. Plot-wise, this movie centers around the return of one of the original Batman's arch enemies, the Joker, the Clown Prince of Gotham. As the movie progresses, we come to realize that this new Joker isn't exactly the original and learns some dark secrets involving the Bat family that help to further illuminate why it's become so jaded and distant in the Batman Beyond TV series. Outside of the original Bat family, we also get a further look into the motivations of Terry, who is the new Batman as well. Overall, the tone of this movie is dark. It manages being at a rather fast pace that keeps the center of attention on the various characters and their relationships to each other. It helps to elevate the movie from a simple action piece to a story about various characters and their development, both in the past, present, and future. On the whole, the only real breaks to the pacing may come from the scenes with Terry interacting with his family or girlfriend, but this, these scenes serve a purpose, in my opinion. They help to establish connections between Terry and those he is close to, so the movie doesn't have to rely on your knowledge of the TV series in order to draw attention and draw from the Joker threatening Terry's family and so on. And in fact, this movie does its best to be a standalone piece that can be enjoyed by anyone. Probably speaking, the movie as well animated leaves little of anything to complain about, which is also true of the voice acting as well. The only major downside to y'all may be the background music, which leaves little impact. It's usually so subtle that you'll forget that it's there for the most part. I'm not sure if this lack of presence was intentional, the result of my attention being focused on the visuals and dialogue, or a failure on the part of the movie. Overall, this lack of presence for the background music isn't exactly a major issue for the film. In fact, I'd argue my bringing it up is more of a minor nitpick than anything. In conclusion, I suggest picking up this film if you manage to come across it. It's definitely worth a look if you're a fan of the Batman franchise and isn't a bad film on its own regardless.